From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. The trial of publisher Jimmy Lai begins uh, on Monday in Hong Kong on national security charges. Uh, Mr. Lai has uh, spent more than a thousand days in prison, and the trial puts Hong Kong and Chinese justice on trial as much as it does Mr. Lai, and we'll tell you what it means. Plus, the Houthi militia in Yemen keep sending attack drones and ballistic missiles at commercial ships, hitting at least two in the last few days, and all but shutting down commercial shipping traffic through one of the most heavily trafficked sea lanes in the world. What is the Biden administration going to do about it? Welcome. I'm Paul Gigo with the Wall Street Journal editorial page here on Potomac. Watch our daily podcast. And I'm here with my colleagues, Bill McGurn and Kate Batchelder odell Welcome. Let's start by talking about the trial of Jimmy Lai finally underway. And let's listen to Jimmy's son, Sebastian Lai, in the, uh, recent days talking about the prospects of a fair trial. There's three government-appointed judges, and uh, there's no jury. The, the security minister boasted of a 100% conviction rate. Um, so so the, the, this is not going to be a fair trial. There's, there's, I, think, I don't think there's any uh, uh, um, doubt about that. Obviously, it, it's quite worrying for me, given my father's age and given, his, given that he's been in prison for three years. But, you know, I know that with international pressure, that, 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 that you know, one day I'll see my father again. Terrible position, Bill. Jimmy Lai is 76, jailed under this national security statute, which is a recent law passed by Hong Kong under pressure from China. Jimmy's been in Stanley Prison now for more than three years. Tell us what we can expect uh, as this trial gets underway. Well, he's as you said, he's been in jail. He was convicted of business charges, of fraud. It was a A bogus case. The U.S. consulate said it was bogus. And so uh, the good news is during the three years he has spent in jail, you know, under national security law, they don't recognize bail, really. The case has been transformed. It's now put Hong Kong in trial. We heard the quote from Sebastian Lai, his son. But I think equally important over the weekend, both the British Foreign Secretary, uh, David Cameron, And the State Department issued statements pointing out that the national security laws are a crock and calling for Jimmy's immediate release. And China hates that. To them, Jimmy Lai is a mastermind of uh, all these demonstrations against him. And they think Hong Kong people would never agitate for democracy unless, like, the CIA were poisoning them. It has to be an outside force. Chinese would never want to be free themselves. And I think all that is coming out. The uh, national security law was passed, uh, I forget now, three or four years ago uh, as a way of stifling all the democratic uh, agitation that had uh, been building in Hong Kong for some time. I guess we haven't seen the exact detail uh, charges yet. They haven't been released at the, the trial. But fundamentally, Bill, isn't he? He's charged with colluding with foreign forces, I guess. Who are the supposedly those foreign forces? Right. We don't know all the evidence for the charges, but we do know some of the charges. He's charged first with sedition. That was under existing Hong Kong law. Um, his lawyers are challenging that now over technicalities. You have to file a charge within a half a year of the offense. Okay. And then there's national security that you mentioned. The beauty of the national security law is that it means anything they want it to mean. And they're livid that other countries don't regard the law seriously because they're just stifling defense. All the things... Jimmy Lai, you mentioned the foreign collusion. That's like foreign collusion to write, you know, that Hong Kong deserves freedom. You should be able to protest peacefully in favor of freedom, light a candle at a park for Tianmen people. I mean, now they have laws, you know, forbidding insults to the national anthem and arresting uh, college girls who tweeted something about independence while in Japan. So Jimmy really angers them because he hasn't gone along. He's refused to plead guilty. He takes his inspiration from Nathan Sharansky, this Soviet refusenik, 
And he's trying to live like a free man in prison by not embracing the lies. And I think China and Hong Kong will really get a black eye from this trial as it proceeds. And, you know, what can get a life sentence in Hong Kong these days? Bill, the Washington Post has an article that appeared over the weekend suggesting that a key witness uh, that Chinese intend to use against Jimmy, a young Democratic uh, advocate, former Democratic advocate named Andy Lee, was threatened and uh, abused after his arrest uh, so that he would testify against Jimmy. Are you familiar with that uh, I'm development? Not for, yeah, I'm familiar with um, with those accusations. I'm not surprised. Um, Jimmy has, I believe, six associates from Apple Daily. I think all or at least five of them. Or his have, former newspaper. Yeah, have turned on him. And, uh, you know, his message is just forgiveness. You know, you have to feel sorry for these people in a way. They're not famous like Jimmy. They have jobs and families. They're under enormous pressure. And that's what you have with the kind of regimes you have in China and Hong Kong these days. Kate, part of the human drama of this case is that Jimmy is a very rich man and uh, could have moved out of Hong Kong easily to escape arrest. And yet uh, he chose not to. He essentially said, I'm going to remain in my home. Uh, and of course, Jimmy came to Hong Kong as a young man, I think at 10 or 11, when his mother sent him there to escape a communist China. That background has always stuck with him. But some others of the democratic uh, uh, reform movement have left, and who can blame them, to be able to live in freedom, not be in prison for potentially the rest of their lives. Uh, as Jimmy may in fact be. But that adds to the, uh, the, I think, the heroism of Jimmy Lai. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy carries a British passport and could have easily left the country. Uh, and so in some sense has chosen to subject himself to this sham trial that's about to play out. Um, and I do think that is part of why his story is so powerful and so resonant around the world. Um, there's a good documentary that made about Jimmy by the Acton Institute where the founder of the Acton Institute, Father Sirico, says, um, in some sense, Jimmy's story is the human story. And he came to Hong Kong young, worked, started his own clothing empire in addition to Apple Daily, the newspaper, and refused to leave Hong Kong and decided that uh, some things, that this human longing for freedom and the ability to uh, speak freely, that it was worth standing up for and great personal cost. And I think that is one reason uh, this case is watched so closely, and another is because it really exposes the fraud of Hong Kong's claim to be a world financial center that will treat capital fairly. Um, and I think that's a huge selling point that has been a huge selling point of Hong Kong that no longer exists. And Jimmy's resistance has, has really exposed that. A couple of uh, factual points just to add to Bill's points. The case of this young woman who, a Hong Kong uh, citizen who made a pro-independence Facebook post while a student in Japan. She was arrested upon her return for violating the national security law. That's how uh, maniacal the government of Hong Kong is in chasing down and punishing any dissent when it comes to the uh, government in Hong Kong. And uh, the statement by the U.S. State Department that Bill mentioned is a quite a strong one, and I'll read a little bit of it here. It says um, – that the actions of stifle press freedom and restrict the flow of information as well as Beijing and local authorities, changes to Hong Kong's electoral system that reduce direct voting and preclude independent and pro-democracy party candidates from participating have undermined Hong Kong's democratic institutions and harmed Hong Kong's reputation as an international business and financial hub. Jimmy Lai has been held in pretrial detention for more than a thousand days, and the authorities have denied him his choice of legal representation. We call on Hong Kong authorities to immediately release Jimmy Lai and all others imprisoned for defending their rights. Bill, let's assume, I think, and it's a safe assumption that this uh, kangaroo court will convict Jimmy. Do you think that he will? Uh, they will ever consider releasing him to uh, live out his days outside Hong Kong? Well, you make a good point, Paul. You know, as you're reading that statement, I feel like Tom Cruise and A Few Good Men, when Demi Moore says, you're such a great lawyer, you're going to help these guys. And he turns to her and says, we're going to lose and we're going to lose big. Jimmy is never 
taken a stand based on thinking he's going to win, that he has a chance. They've shown it with the things you mentioned, changing his lawyer, the three judges. <laughs>